Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, December 17th, and it is a cool, rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. What are you going to do? Yesterday was beautiful. Uh, we were in the 50s, sunny. Uh, Friday was nice too. And that's great because I started my vacation on Friday, so I'm happy about that. I am off until January 2nd. So really looking forward to enjoying the days ahead, enjoying Christmas and, and all that good stuff. So today I don't have a pipe going because I wanted to share the tobacco with you before I loaded it in the pipe. Uh, this is going to be, so I suspended the tobacco of the week for the rest of the year so that I can enjoy my holiday tobaccos. Uh, talked last week, I think, or maybe the week before about the North Pole peppermint mocha, uh, which I am having an occasional bowl of. Um, not my favorite, but you know, it's it's not terrible. Uh, what I'm going to be smoking today is another one that's sort of become a holiday tradition for me. And I know my writing there is terrible, but uh, it's Kendall Cream from uh, Sam Goweth. And this was something that my buddy Couch uh, gave me uh, back in 2021, according to the label here. And uh, he said, you know, try this out as a holiday. To and man, it just fits the bill. It's now it is a Lakeland, surprisingly, but it's not an overpowering Lakeland like some of those things I had a smoke recently. Uh, it's got a very slight flavor to it, but it's really good quality Virginia uh, Burley. Uh, just nice stuff, and it's got a creaminess to it, thus the name Kendall Cream, that I really enjoy. So I've been only smoking this around the holidays, and sadly I'm running quite low on it, so I'm going to have to see if I can't find some more. But it's uh, really nice flakes, rubs out easily, perfect moisture level, was right out of the tin. And I'm going to be packing that up as I chat with you in my Demi Lovat, and uh, yeah, we'll get that lit up and we'll move on to other topics. Uh, speaking of the Demi Lovat, I, I love this pipe. I think if I ever get back to pipe making, which I'm going to, I am going to, uh, and I finished my project, which was I have to make 10 billiards before I can do anything else, uh, I think I'm going to make some more of these because I just really like this the lightness of this pipe and the it's so easy to clench and it smokes well and I'm just happy with it so anyway that's that's what my future may or may not hold and I'm not going to pack a large bowl here I'm only going to go for because I don't have much left I've only probably got one one more bowl after this so maybe save that for Christmas day but I've got mm, probably three quarters of a bowl here. And if we run out, we'll switch to Haunted Bookshop. No harm. So I believe this is a bit hard to come by. But not impossible. And uh, based on past experience, well worth the effort. Another tobacco that I really like smoking around Christmas is um, Germain's Plum Cake. And I have several tins of that in my cellar. And every year I forget to take one out and remind me next year. <laughs> if you're around next year when I start babbling about holiday tobacco, remind me to get out a tin of Germain's Plum Cake because it's wonderful stuff. And I'd, I'd like to share that experience with you too. This is not, not igniting immediately, but we'll get it. A little bit of coffee. Which does nothing to help me light the tobacco, but it tastes good. There we go. Big Dave, this might be one for you. My buddy Big Dave likes white smoke. <laughs> <laughs> 
I saw in the monitor there was white smoke. So, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I got on that first attempt to light. I got a little bit of smoke too far back in the throat there, and it uh, it irritated a little. That happens. Happens to the best of us, and you know that's something. That actually segues nicely into what I wanted to talk about today. Um, if you saw the title card, and you should have because it was at the start of the video, uh, there was a quote there from, from Lao Tzu, uh, and I don't remember the, oh, if uh, to know others is, is wisdom, to know yourself is enlightenment, something along those lines. Lao Tzu, as you may or may not know, uh, ancient Chinese philosopher, uh, wrote the uh, Tao Te Ching, uh, very influential in Eastern thought, and uh, a good guy to get to know if you're interested at all in philosophy, I guess. And don't worry, I'm not going to make this a philosophy talk, believe me, it's, it's about other things, it's about pipe smoking in a sense. Also, the title of this video, which is uh, Know Yourself and Be Authentic, I think is what I wrote. Uh, it, it's a callback to uh, the famous quote attributed to Socrates. I believe it was Socrates. Socrates, or I think it was Socrates, uh, where he was asked, you know, how, how can you sum up all of philosophy? And he said, that's simple, know yourself. Uh, now, whether or not he actually said that, it's not important. The point is, knowing yourself and being authentic is, is, I think, really important in life. And I think most of us do a great job of that. But I also, I'm not, I don't want to be critical about anyone right now. That's not my goal. Um, but I want to talk about my personal approach and my personal observations about YouTube in general. Okay, not, not the YTPC, but just in general, YouTube, and maybe even extend it out to social media in general. What I tend to gravitate towards are people who appear to be authentic, you know, that are really just being themselves. And this struck me... Uh, I think it was last night actually I sometimes before I go to bed I'll put on YouTube and I'll you know watch a couple of pipe videos and I'll switch over to my other channel which I don't make videos on I won't even tell you what the name of it is because it doesn't matter it's just a way to sort of watch things that are not pipe related and I have a lot of woodworking and machine shop and things like that that I follow but there's this one guy that I've been following for years His channel name is Doing It Cheap, and I will link to his channel below. And he calls himself Paw Paw. He's an elderly, elderly, older man, um, probably in his 60s. I, I don't actually know his age. Um, big, white beard, Santa Claus looking fellow. <laughs> calls himself Paw Paw because that's what his grandchildren call him. And this is the most authentic fellow you're ever going to run into and he just he's all over the place you know one day he's reviewing uh tools that he bought from harbor freight and another day he's cooking something and another day he's talking about his homemade wine and uh the latest video and the one that kind of got me thinking about all this was he made a what he calls a nork which was an idea his father had when he was a little kid and it's just sharpening the end, edge of a fork so you can use it as a knife, so it's a knife and fork. And he shows how he does it in his workshop, and and then he goes in the kitchen and, and tries it out. And, and there's nothing about this guy that's, that's fake or put on. There's nothing about, he doesn't have sets, he doesn't care what's in the background. <laughs> if you watch his videos, you start to really see that. Um, and there's something beautiful about that. You know, there's something... 
there's something real about it. It's authentic. He's true to himself. He's not putting up a set or a green screen or anything like that. He's just, this is who I am, this is where I live, and this is what I do. And when I watch videos, and now I'm thinking about YouTube, the YouTube Pipe Community videos, those are the kind of things I gravitate towards. You know, I, I, I love people like, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to think of everybody, but you know, you got uh, Yardism and, and Northwest Pipe Smoker, where they just turn on the, video, the camera and start talking. Uh, Tamper Tantrum, uh, Armchair Piper Ed, uh, Corvette Jim, or whatever he's calling himself these days. <laughs> See, I think he's CJ's Garage now. Um, these are just, they just sit down and, and you know that you're just, uh, you're just having a chat with somebody. It's like you just stopped over their house and, and, and wanted to, wanted to chat with them or they just stopped in your house. And that's, that's kind of what I strive to do. You know, what you're looking at here is not a set. This is where I do my pipe work and, and other like small detailed work when I'm down here in the shop. Right over there is my video monitor and computer where I, when I work from home for my day job, this is where I work. So I spend a lot of time in this corner. This is not, uh, not a set. This is, this is real. And, uh, you know, the rest of the shop, it's a mess. And I got to be honest, I, I've thought about making some woodworking videos and stuff. I'm like, how am I going to film that? It's, you know, there's all this junk and everything. People are going to you know, look at that and think, boy, this guy's a mess. And I am, you know, and maybe I got to get more comfortable with that. Maybe I have to, to, to be more authentic and know myself a bit better. But I'm never going to be one of these guys. And again, I'm not being critical of these people. But, you know, they're folks that just make a set for, for their YouTube videos. Um, they, they use a green screen and, and project a set. And that's fine. You know, that can be quite entertaining. But it's just, it's not authentic to me. Um, and that's, you know, with when it comes to social media in general, I think that's where we're going down a very dangerous path of creating online personas that are not at all connected to who we really are, and then portraying them, both fracturing ourselves, so now I've got real me and online me, and at the same time creating an expectation of other, in others that that's who I really am and that they should try to emulate that. Now, of course, nobody's trying to emulate me. I hope you're not trying to emulate me. Don't do that. <laughs> but. You know, especially these kids, you know, the, 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 the quote, influencers. Um, you know, it, especially with, it's a problem with young girls, where they're, they're watching these, these girls who are pretending to live a lifestyle that they don't actually live, uh, dressing in ways that they couldn't possibly afford to dress, applying all sorts of post-processing filters to make them look better than they actually look, and creating this idea that this is the norm. And that this is what you have to live up to. It's not a good thing. It's really not a good thing. And it's not a good thing in any aspect, including pipe smoking. So we don't want that. I've been thinking, that, so you might remember a month or so back, maybe two months back, I made a video it was called something like uh, advice to new and young pipe smokers part one and I do have a, it's a three-part plan and I do have part two in the works up here I know what I want to talk about and it ties into this concept of authenticity and where you get your information And where does the real truth lie? What do you really need to know? Um, and I think you're going to be surprised by what I say there, because I'm not going to say, uh, you know, look at this person, not that person, or look for this kind of video, not that kind of video. But what I'm going to say is you shouldn't be looking. And you'll have to wait for the video to understand that better. But be, be true to yourself. 
know yourself and live yourself. Don't try to live someone else. Uh, there's a, it's probably overused now, but it, it, I, I saw this sign actually in a, in a doctor's office years back and it said, uh, be yourself, everyone else is taken. And you know, it's, it's trite, but it's good advice. And own who you are. Be proud of who you are. Um, be proud of your quirks. Be proud of your shortcomings. They make you the person you are. Well, that's enough of that. But you know, these videos, as I've said in the past, they're 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 really therapy for me, and I get a thought in my head, and I just gotta get it out there. So, hope you enjoyed it. So, what does today hold for me? Well, it's going to be fun. Um, so, I mentioned this on the Friday Night live stream. My wife is abandoning me for Christmas again. It's fine. She wants to spend time with her, her parents. They're in their 90s. I encourage her to spend as much time with them as, I, as she can. I don't want to go because I just don't want to go. So, I'm going to stay here. She's going to go there. It'll be fun. So... I have a friend, a good friend, uh, that I work with, and I wanted to make them something special for Christmas. So I've been working on this. This took me maybe two days to make, but it's a wooden spoon. And, uh, yeah, I like it. I think it came out well. Never made a wooden spoon before. And, uh... I was happy with this, and I thought, oh, I'll show my wife. And so I show her, get her opinion on it, and she really likes it. She says, it's really nice. And then she said, can you make five more before Thursday? My initial thought was to say no, but I enjoy making them. By the way, this is cherry with a walnut oil uh, finish, so it's food safe finish. Um, I hope I have enough cherry to make five more, but today I'm going to be making five more of these. Now, I'm not actually going to be making five more spoons because she decided, luckily, that what she would rather have are five of these. And this is something I made, oh gosh, probably over a year ago. It's the same wood, but this has been used and washed and everything else, whereas this is brand spanking new. Now, I could oil this, and it would come right back to this kind of color and everything. Um, and you should probably occasionally do that with wooden uh, utensils. Maybe even sand, because you know, these parts get a little frayed. Maybe sand a little bit and put some oil on it. Maybe I'll do that before I take this back upstairs. But anyway, uh, this is, it's a, I was thinking spatula when I made it. You can see it's got a slight curve to it. And this thing turns out to be remarkably handy. Um, we, we use our Instant Pot to make rice and a lot of rice-based dishes. And it just is really great for getting in there and, and scooping and scraping the sides and stuff. So my wife really likes this. She wants me to make five more of these so she can give them to her family. So... That's good because it's a lot easier to make that than to make that. Um, this required actual hand carving, whereas this I can all do on a sander. So, yeah. Going to be making five wooden spatulas today. Not exactly how I thought I'd be spending my vacation, but it'll be fun. I enjoy doing it. And uh, still going to make some drawers, but I will. I will get to that. I'm going to buy the wood this week uh, once it stops raining, and we'll get those knocked out. I'll keep you updated. So, Kendall Cream. Good stuff. Hard to find, but worth the effort. Uh, great tobacco flavor. Very slight, creamy topping that just works with it. It's a, it's a beautiful blend and, and a great holiday blend for me. Um, Virginia heavy, lots of burly in the background to provide depth. Uh, good stuff. 
Thank you, Couch. One last thing before I go, and I need to check. Yes, there's a new YouTube channel that I'd like to, to shout out. Um, we've only got about eight videos up. Uh, again, fitting into the sort of authenticity category. It's a husband and wife couple. Uh, the channel name is J and D's Pipe Dreams YTPC, and I will put a link below. I only became aware of them yesterday. I've only watched a couple other videos, but they seem like good people, and they're pipe smokers, so of course they're good people. And uh, it'd be great to welcome them into our uh, our community and and uh, yeah, just bring them into the fold. So head over to J and D's Pipe Dreams YTPC. Again, link will be below in the description. Give them a sub, give them a comment, you know, say hello, uh, do what we do, and grow the community. So with that, guys, I'm going to draw this video to a close and let you get on with your Sundays. Next Sunday will be Christmas Eve. I will be doing a video, um, and we'll maybe do something Christmassy for that. By the way, I decorated. Did you see my, my decoration? Uh, Next Friday, we have our interview with Santa Claus on the, on the live stream, our annual sit down with, with old St. Nick. Um, he's very busy this time of year, so if something comes up and he can't make it, we might have to, might have to figure something else out, but I hope, uh, I hope Santa will be able to join us. And uh, yeah, we'll just go on from there. So join me next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right on this uh, channel for our live stream with an interview with Santa Claus and uh, hang around for, uh, for next Sunday. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, not because I want it, but because it grows our community. And most importantly, be authentic to yourself and be authentic to everyone else. It makes the world a better place. With that, folks, have a great Sunday. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.